In this video, we're going to go over a very widely used and common algorithm, topological sort. When considering topological sort, there are some constraints that we need to take into consideration. That is, topological sort can only be done on directed acyclic graphs or DAGs. A directed graph is simply a graph whose edges are directed or have a direction. For example, this edge is directed towards this node, which means that there is a path to this node from this node, but there is no path back to this node from this node. This is in contrast with undirected graphs where the edges of the graph do not have directions. In the case of undirected edges, the edge can be traversed in either direction. So for topological sort to be applicable, the graph needs to be a directed graph. The other constraint is that the graph must be acyclic. And acyclic is just a fancy way of saying that the graph contains no cycles. And this is what I mean by a cycle. A cycle is just a path that starts from one node and ends at that same node. As you can see here, our starting node is the same as our ending node in this path. So no cycles means that we can never get back to a node once we've left it. And we'll get back to why these constraints are necessary later on in the video. For now, just know that topological sort can only be applied to DAGs, aka directed acyclic graphs. So let's start from the very basics. What is meant by topological? So the topology of a graph is just the arrangement of nodes and connections in a graph. And the key word here is arrangement. When looking at this DAG, we should ask ourselves what arrangement is trying to be achieved here. So let's imagine that each node in this graph is a task that needs to be completed. But there are tasks that cannot be completed unless some other task is completed first. So let's take a simple example into consideration. We want to bake a cake. And the tasks that need to be completed in order to bake a cake are, we need to go shopping and we need to buy eggs and oil. And we need to buy the mixing powder and make the mix for the cake and we need to oil the pan and put the mix into the pan and we need to bake the cake. And finally, when all is said and done, we can eat the cake. Now, as you can see here, most of these nodes have dependencies. For example, we can't make the cake mix without first going shopping and buying eggs, oil, and mixing powder. So that means that this mix node has three in degrees. Now, don't get discouraged by the fancy terminology. In degrees is just the number of edges coming to the node. And each edge coming to the node can be considered a dependency, which in other words means that making the mix for the cake depends on shopping, eggs, and oil. So three dependencies or in degrees. And in contrast, out degrees is just the number of edges going from the node. So this mix node has one out degree. So this arrangement of tasks and how they are connected to one another is the topology of the overall goal of baking and then eating a cake. And we can understand the topology of the graph by looking at the directed edges of the graph because they represent the dependencies of each node or task. So once we understand the topology or arrangement of task, all topological sort is doing is converting that arrangement from graph form to a linear ordering where each task comes after its dependencies. And that's actually what is meant by this confusing Wikipedia definition that says that topological ordering is a linear ordering of a graph's nodes where every directed edge UV blah blah blah. So now that we have an understanding of what topological sort is, we can now get into how we actually produce this linear structure using a topological sort algorithm on a directed acyclic graph. So there are a couple of ways to do topological sort. In this video, we're going to go over how to do it using depth first search, AKA DFS. Also keep in mind that there can be multiple topological orderings for a given graph. Anyways, to find a topological ordering using DFS, we also need to use a stack. So we're going to iterate through every node of the graph, and at each iteration, if that node has not been visited, we are going to do a depth first traversal with the current iterations node as the root node. And we'll mark every node as visited as we visit them. So this yellow box will represent our iterator. So just imagine that we are looping through every node in this graph and this yellow box is just saying where we're at in the loop. 
and we're going to go to the farthest point that we can reach or the maximum depth that we can reach from the node focused by the yellow box. So the node that is within the yellow box will be our root node at each iteration. So we'll start a depth first traversal at this node as our root. And we have one out degree, so that is the only path that we can take. And we end up here at node two. And once again, we have one out degree, so that is the only path we can take, so we end up here at node three. Now, once we reach node three, there are no more out degrees. So we've actually reached the maximum depth. So once we reach the maximum depth, we're going to add the value at this node to the stack. And don't worry, it'll become clear why we're doing this soon. After we add that value to the stack, we backtrack to node two. And at node two, before backtracking, we also add the value here to the stack. So whenever we're about to backtrack, right before backtracking, we should add the value at the node to the stack. So we backtrack again, and now we've arrived at our root node or our starting point. We then add the value at this node to the stack as well, and then backtrack. And backtracking in this case will take us out of the depth first traversal and back to our loop. So the loop will then iterate to the next node. So now our iterator arrives at node two, but node two is marked as visited because as you saw, we already visited it. So we'll just iterate up to node three. Same thing here, we've already visited node three, so we iterate up to node four. Now node four is uncharted territory, so we'll start DFS with node four being our starting point or root node. Now this node has two out degrees and it doesn't matter which path we take first, so we can just pick one here. But actually, one path leads to an already visited node, so we actually can't go that way. So now we're left with only one other path. So we'll take that path and move to node five. Node five only has one out degree, therefore there's only one direction we can go here, but actually that out degree leads to an already visited node. So now it's time to backtrack. But before backtracking, we need to of course add the value at node five to the stack. Then we backtrack to node four, add its value to the stack, and then backtrack again, which brings us back to the iterator or the loop. So we'll iterate up to five and see that it's visited, so then we iterate up to six. Now six has two out degrees, but both of them lead to visited nodes. So actually all we can do at node six is backtrack, but before that we can't forget to add the value to the stack. Then we backtrack, and at this point, we've iterated through all of the nodes, so our loop will terminate. So at this point, we've added all of the nodes' values to our stack, and actually the order that these nodes occupy in the stack from top to bottom is one topological ordering of this graph. So we can then just pop all of these items off the stack to get our ordering, and this works because a stack is last in, first out which means that the last item added to the stack will be the first to be removed. So we remove these items from top to bottom, and what we're left with is one topological ordering for this graph. So now we're left with the question of why DFS actually works here, and the answer is actually so simple that it might seem difficult to understand. So you'll notice that every edge in the graph leads to the node that the edge is coming from's depender. So the node that we're coming from when following the edge is the dependency of the node that we're going to. So that means that every node previous to the current node that we're at when following the directed edges is a dependency for that current node. So basically, whenever we do a DFS, once we've reached the depth for that DFS, we've actually just traversed a mini topological ordering. So that means that we kind of already have multiple mini topological orderings within the graph. So all this algorithm is doing is adding all of these mini topological orderings together into one big topological ordering. And we're combining all of these mini topological orderings using the stack. And at this point, it should be pretty obvious why there can't be cycles in the graph as mentioned in the beginning of the video, because if there are cycles in the graph, there can be no topological ordering because what would be the last node in the ordering if we're in a cycle? And same goes for why the edges must be directed. If they aren't directed, there's no way to know which node depends on which node when considering two nodes connected by an undirected edge, because remember, the directed edge points to the depender. And yeah. That's going to be it for a topological sort, 
And if you've reached this point in the video, you've obviously found this video useful, so please leave a like. Don't be stingy. Anyways, I'll see you in the next one.